Hello, it's a lovely day today and um, it's a sort of day in spring when one ought to be out tidying up the garden and um, well I don't know we might bend up out there eventually um, but as you hear the cricket is still going on on the long wave and um, so or perhaps it's a different match I'm, I'm not very well up on cricket I'm sorry um, but it's now time to get onto the medium wave. Here's our long wave rejector circuit um, with its variable capacitor and its coil and the, the frequency is centered on about 200 kilohertz because that's where our long wave station is. But to receive the medium wave we've got to raise the frequency of the rejector uh, because medium waves have a higher frequency than long waves. And we don't want to alter our capacitor, we need that for tuning because there's two or three stations we're going to hear on the medium wave. Uh, so uh, the alternative, medium waves have a higher frequency than long waves and uh, so we need to get up to that frequency and we want a centre frequency of about one megahertz or one million cycles per second, one million hertz, because the medium wave extends from about 500 kilohertz to 1,600 kilohertz or 1.6 megahertz. Uh, so we want somewhere around the middle of it and we want to keep our variable capacitor the same so the obvious thing to do is to reduce the number of turns on the coil. So we need to replace a long wave coil with many turns by another one and here it is uh, exactly the same but it's, this one's got about 60 turns on it. Here's our new little coil, so let's uh, turn up the amplifier and see what we can hear. Sounds like there's uh, two things there, let's tune around. There's definitely two stations mixed up, let's tune the other way. Oh dear, it's not working very well. I think what we need at this point is a nice soothing mug of tea. And out in the garden, which I forecast we'd end up out there actually, um, and the reason is because our problem lies out here uh, in, the, in, in the garden and it lies with our antenna on the one hand which is up there not very high up and then as we pan down uh, the other half of the problem you'll soon see and yes it's the ground uh, now although the ground isn't a terribly good conductor it's quite big uh, and what's happening is we're having some capacitance between our antenna uh, and the ground and that is what's inhibiting our circuit. Yes, what's happening is that our aerial is doing the thing we want it to do which is to pick up the waves and bring them into the, the room here uh, but unfortunately it's got some capacitance with the ground and that's sort of coming in as well and it's damping, uh, it's stopping our resonance circuit from working properly. Um, so. Uh, is there any way that we can uh, keep that capacitance at bay but still let the signals in? And there is um, two or three ways that you can uh, uh, do that. Uh, one of them is to put um, a, a, co a coupling capacitor uh, in the aerial circuit um, uh, and that is usually quite effective. Uh, let's have a look at a diagram. Yes, all we've done is added another variable capacitor in between the aerial and the top of the tuned circuit. So, I mean, that's very simple. Uh, and it will enable us to vary how much uh, of the um, signal gets into the tuned circuit and also keep the capacitance of the aerial at bay. 
Well, no sooner the word than the blow, as the saying goes. Uh, we now have two variable capacitors. The aerial comes in here and goes through this variable capacitor and then into our tuned circuit of coil and variable capacitor and then through the crystal diode and to the output. Uh, so uh, will this be any better? Let's turn up the volume and see what we can hear. It's still a jumble. Let's tune across here. No, uh, it's no good. We'll have to decrease the coupling capacitor. Let's put it up somewhere there and try again. Ah, now we've got a station in the clear. Down at the Hawthorns uh, at Millwall, Will Perry. Well, I can tell you that it's now Millwall. So we, we've actually finally got a medium station in the clear. And it's uh, football, you see, so that's great. So let's see if we can find another station. Uh, and some pretty distressing scenes here after the pitch, John. Because I'm hearing reports. Well, it's still jumbly. Let's decrease the coupling further and start again. So there's our football station again. Now we've got another station almost in the clear. Of course, the trouble is, making simple crystal sets on Saturday afternoon when there's a lot of football on, it means it is hard to tell one station from another, or at least it is for me. Let's decrease the coupling to its minimum and begin again. You'll notice the tuning's now sharper. This first football station is now in a quite a narrow area of this variable capacitor. Kevin Davis, 10 men of Manchester United, but loses out. And that means that uh, Michael Carrick is... So that's better. There's another football station nearly in the clear. Is there anything else? It's absolute radio's rock and roll football with Sky, the home of live sport for 20... Yes, there is. We've actually got three stations here and um, we've had to reduce this capacitor to the minimum, but we can now get three stations, uh, two of them in the clear. The inside of the post, having eluded everybody, and it bounced back down past Carson. It's very exciting, this radio lark, you know. Um, there's another station in there which we can't quite separate, but we're definitely on the right road now. Well, I think it's time to do a bit of summing up now. Uh, set's gradually working better. Um, we, we can make it work a little be better still. We'll come to that in a moment. Uh, but we're just summing up and saying that um, crystal sets, uh, when they were in their classic era, the 1920s and 1930s, um, the, the, it was generally regarded that a reception range was perhaps 30, 40, 50 miles. And anything you got over that, you were, you know, you were doing pretty well. Uh, and they, were, they weren't very loud. I mean, a classic family scenario, uh, which I've had told to me by my grandfather, was that if, for example, father was listening um, to his crystal set uh, on headphones, of course, like these, I mean, we've been cheating by using a modern amplifier, uh, he'd be listening to it, whatever it was, and uh, mother might be on the other side of the kitchen table reading the newspaper, and when she turned the page, the rustling of the newspaper would bring forth a shh, shh, shh from father, you see, uh, because the rustling of the paper was stopping him hearing the radio. So, you know, the signals were, I mean, it was wonderful radio, but uh, it was never a very strong signal on a crystal set. Here's the final circuit, and um, we've played our trump card and completely separated 
the aerial circuit from our resonance circuit. Uh, the aerial at top left goes via the coupling capacitor down into a small coil that goes to earth. And that small coil is quite near the coil in our resonance circuit. So it, it, uh, it makes a transformer and the radio frequency energy from the antenna is coupled into, our, into the coil in the resonance circuit. Um, so they're, they're really quite isolated. Uh, there is a penalty in a loss of gain, uh, but it does work um, quite well as we intend to find out. Well, here we have our new and final coil. Here's the original winding of about 60 turns, and near to it uh, is a winding made of thicker wire, about 10 or 11 turns, and the aerial is connected to this and goes to earth, and it is coupled into our tuning coil. So, uh, will this be any better? Yes, will this ever increasingly sophisticated circuit enable us to finally separate out the three stations we are supposed to be able to receive here? Well, let's turn up the volume and see. Oh, how curious. Hmm. There's no sound. Right. Now, this is amazing. I've, I've surprised myself. There's nothing wrong with the circuit. It's actually working. It's just become so selective that it isn't tuned into anything, so there's no sound. Let's do it again. The reason we can't receive anything is because there's nothing in this position. Uh, what we have to do is actually operate um, a tuning capacitor. And it works. We've actually got one of the stations we've got one of the stations in the clear there and uh, that is Radio 5 Alive and it isn't um, association football anymore it's uh, rugby football now so let's uh, continue to tune Here comes the next station. And there we are. See another separate station. To right in this second half with blue shirts, white shorts, and white socks on. With how? But I mean, this is uh, football, you see. Well, what about the other station? Well, and Osman in midfield with Cahill. <laughs> oh, the re reassuring sound of kind of rock music. <laughs> So it, it's fabulous, it works, and we're still quite closely coupled. If we decrease the coupling a bit, that should separate the stations even more, but they don't really need separating anymore. Station, station number one. Station number two. Station number three. Well, we've uh, seemed to have brought our crystal set to a pretty high state of development. It can pick up and separate all the three stations available to us in this district. Uh, and so, you know, we should be pretty pleased with ourselves. But, um, well, actually, um, there is a big problem. Uh, I've actually been cheating, or we have been cheating, in these videos because we always took the output of the crystal set into a powerful modern amplifier, you see. Now that gave us a, a great advantage because if we had worn our original 1928 headphones and plugged them into the output of the crystal set, It's only just audible, and you wouldn't get much listening satisfaction. You, you can hardly hear it. I mean, if somebody rustled the pages of a newspaper, you know, you just wouldn't hear anything. So, what does it mean? Um, you know, back in the 1920s, the crystal set Deva T, the home radio experts, would work on ways of getting increased selectivity for different stations. But there was always a penalty 
when they added in a new degree of sophistication in tuning in and selectivity and that was that the signal got fainter and fainter and fainter until like here we can hardly hear it on headphones we can only hear it because we've got a powerful modern amplifier uh, well uh, is that the end of the story uh, well no it isn't because there are ways of taking a little tiny output and making it louder and we'll look at those in part four I think that'll do. Mind you, 